Well, thank you everyone for joining us. We're looking forward to getting to know more about Novos today. My name is Stephanie Dano. I'm the executive director at Lifespan.io. And here with me, we have Chris Mirabel from Novos. Uh, so Chris is a serial entrepreneur, lifelong health enthusiast, and founder and CEO of Novos. His interest in health became a passion for biology, basically after being cured of a brain tumor as a teen. So over the years, Chris has focused on integrating the latest longevity research into his lifestyle. And he's achieved a biological age of more than third lower than the chronological, according to multiple epigenetic age clocks. Chris founded the public benefit corporation Novos to help bring the latest longevity science to the consumer with minimal time or fuss. So we're really excited to have you. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And so this is an AMA Ask Me Anything uh, session. So let's get started. One of the questions that some of our, our viewers are asking is, Essentially, you know, if you could talk about the scientific research you've been conducting for Novos and what some of the results are. Sure, I'd be happy to. So uh, first and foremost, when we formulated Novos, uh, Novos Core in particular, which is our foundational product, we brought it through the ringer in terms of all of the different uh, ingredients out there that we could consider for in the formulation. And uh, we put it through 10 different filters in terms of the, uh, the, the efficacy, the safety, the evidence in multiple animal species, as well as in humans as well. And you can find out more about that at novoslabs.com slash evidence. In addition to that, we uh, aren't resting on our laurels. We're, we're going beyond that to do additional research for us to be able to validate that the synergistic properties of our formulation are actually conducive to improving health span and lifespan. The first studies that we've commissioned have already yielded results. So the very first study was done by i Life Sciences, which many of you will be familiar with in the longevity space. Uh, they did a DNA damage study and they uh, subjected human cells to irradiation, uh, either as a control with, without Novos uh, or with Novos at different dosages, as well as another control which had no irradiation. And what was found was that we were able to reduce DNA damage by as much as 77%. And on average across the dosage range, uh, 68%. These numbers are enormous. Uh, they're so significant that the researchers at i called the CEO, Kelsey, to make him aware of uh, the, the effect size that we saw with, with Novo score. Wow. So that was really exciting. Incredible. That was our first, first set of results. Second set of results was uh, conducted at Newcastle University in the United Kingdom by a professor who studies DNA damage as well as cellular senescence. And he was able to, uh, with the study, show that Novos Core was able to uh, have a senostatic property on senescent cells, human senescent cells. So what does that essentially mean? So everyone knows about senolytics. You hear the term thrown around all of the time. That's to destroy senescent cells. As some uh, researchers like Dr. Judith Campisi have, have shown, sometimes you don't want to destroy senescent cells. They do serve a purpose. And we don't fully understand when you want to keep some and when you don't want to keep them. And so uh, many people, many researchers believe that a senomodulatory effect it might be superior at, at this point in time compared to a senolytic effect. And what was found was that Novos had a senostatic effect. Essentially, the size of senescent cells was reduced by more than 40%. There was no creation of additional senescent cells. And the effect size was comparable to the gold standard longevity prescription drug rapamycin. So that was a really exciting output for us to see as well. Not only were we reducing the DNA damage, but we're also seeing that we, we could uh, uh, mitigate the effects of, of senescent cells and the uh, uh, SAS that results from that. Finally, there's a third study that we have not published yet, but uh, we just recently received word of, of the results. In this study, I can't say too much about it, but what I, I would say is that whereas the first DNA study was looking at oxidative da damage uh, to, to the DNA, this study was actually looking at uh, strand breaks, both single and double strand breaks. And it used um, a, a chemotherapy, two different types of chemotherapies to be able to induce these double strand and single strand breaks. And we had a very significant reduction uh, on, the, on the single and double uh, strand breaks. 
So uh, that's something that we'll, we'll eventually be uh, releasing to the public. We'll, we'll probably do a little bit more research into that first before we then uh, publish that information. But that's something that has us very excited as well. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. So I have a couple questions that have come in, but I think it makes sense to stay in a different order. So why don't we go to, you know, talking a little bit more in depth about how the approach that you're using is different from others in the space. And, you know, obviously longevity in itself has a bit of a stigma and there's a narrative issue that even at lifespan.io, we are hoping to work on heavily in the next few months. But, you know, why should we be confident that this isn't snake oil, for example? Well, I, I think I kind of answered that question with my last answer, but as I mentioned before, the approach that we're, we're taking in terms of how we formulate the product in the first place, based on more than 190 scientific studies, uh, looking at multiple animal species to ensure that the mechanisms uh, are, are, or the effects of that specific ingredient are evolutionarily conserved across species, indicating it is most likely evolutionarily conserved conserve for humans as well. Looking at the effects of that ingredient uh, on human biology. So does it reduce um, the, the risk of or the effects of some sort of health condition? Um, does it have positive health effects on humans? Because as you know, it's prohibitively expensive in terms of both time commitment and financially to do human lifespan studies. So we have to look at surrogate markers like this. Uh, and so there's all of these different standards that, that we hold our formulation up against. But then the fact that we don't stop there and we go on to put our money towards our resources towards third parties to do research on our behalf to validate that we are reducing DNA damage, that we are having positive effects on uh, senescent cells, uh, that we are you know going above and beyond that as well. There are multiple other studies that I can't speak about just yet because they're in the earlier stages, but we are proving this out in, in human cells and, and human beings as well. And uh, that I think is proof positive that this isn't snake oil or just a, a, a marketing um, a marketing team. It's, it's actually far more than that. There's solid science behind everything we're doing. Got it. Thank you so much for that. If anyone has any follow-up questions on that one specifically, please reach out to me. Um, so another one, it would be great to hear some thoughts on how to best measure the effect of Novos supplement. So even some people at Humanity have asked about you know, their interest in helping and look forward to discussing more with you on exactly how to measure. Yeah, so happy to speak with, continue speaking with people at Humanity, like uh, a longtime friend of mine, Mike Gear. Um, so what, first of all, what I can speak of is my own personal experience tracking the, the progress. So I launched a blog a few weeks ago called slowmyage.com. And on that blog, I go into many different biomarkers that are uh, direct measures or surrogate measures of aging. Uh, the, the foundational post on that blog looks at epigenetic tests. And so I would start there in terms of is Novos having an effect? you can look at over the long term epigenetic age. You don't want to take the test, you know, once every two months or three months. Uh, that's, it's not enough time. But if you go extended period of time, let's just say after a year of uh, making the lifestyle changes, whether that be through using Novos as well as the lifestyle longevity advice that we provide on our, our website and our blog, you would be able to then see the difference in certain epigenetic tests. In particular, for example, the, the Dunedin pace clock, to be able to see the pace at which you're aging, which would be the most sensitive to uh, changes in, in lifestyle and uh, supplementation and diet and so on. So you can see my results there. They're, they're uh, quite distinct according to True Diagnostic, who is a speaker today, uh, who we ran the test through. Uh, one of the executives there said that they hadn't seen results like this across all of the samples they've run before. So uh, that's, that's one area that, that uh, you can look. Uh, and I've been taking notebooks for about three years now, so, uh, just as a side note. Another is looking at other biomarkers. Like for example, I track my VO2 max. Um, I track my pulse wave velocity. Uh, these are cardiovascular markers and, and they're correlated with age. Uh, you can look at your telomere length as well and see if that is lengthening or shortening and at what rate it is doing so. 
Uh, so there's many different uh, biomarkers you can look at. And then of course, there's the subjective. So we have many customers who report that they feel more energy or they're sleeping better or their skin is looking better after 30 or 60 days or so. So there's also that component, right? Like if, if you are healthier, you might start feeling healthier as well. And so uh, you can't rule that out. It, it's, not, it's not necessarily uh, quantifiable in the same way as doing these other tests, like I mentioned, which would be perhaps the best scientific, but you can't rule out the subjective feelings of well-being over extended periods of time, which is less likely to be placebo if, if it's maintaining itself over months and months and months. Awesome. Understood. Is the ingredient list proprietary, Chris? The ingredient list is not proprietary. Now, the uh, formulation itself is, is patent pending, but the ingredient list you can find on our website. If you go to novoslabs.com uh, slash shop or you click to view Novos Core, you'll be able to see uh, the, all of the ingredients and the quantities of those ingredients. Do you have any recommendation, recommendations sure. regarding fasting or exercise in conjunction with your supplements? For example, bioavailability with or without food? Great question. So we recommend that you take Novos with food because there are a couple of ingredients that are probably absorbed better with food. So for example, fisetin, uh, it is more fat soluble. And so having that with food, you'll probably absorb it better. Uh, perhaps even rhodiola rosea um, also has um, a better absorption with food. With that said, it's not required that you have it with food. Most of the ingredients are water soluble, but some of them will be absorbed better with food. So it's recommended that you do have it with food. Uh, if you are fasting and uh, you, maybe you're doing a, an extended fast of 24, 48, 72 hour fast, can you take Novos during that period? Yes, you can. It's, it's not going to increase blood glucose levels. So in that sense, uh, it's not going to break the fast and you can take it and you'll absorb a majority of the ingredients. But for you know the day-to-day -day use, I would suggest that you have it uh, with food. And in terms of exercise, uh, it, it really depends on when you prefer to take it. I personally work out first thing in the morning. I take Novos Boost, which contains NMN. Uh, to pre-workout, which can potentially improve your energy levels and your, your, uh, your, your muscle power and so on. But uh, I wait until lunchtime to have Novos Core. And I have half of the serving of Novos Core with lunch in about eight to 12 ounces of water. And then I have the second half of the packet with my dinner. So I kind of spread it out. So I slow the absorption a little bit. It's not the biggest deal. You don't have to do it that way. But since I'm working from home, it's very easy for me to space it out into two different meals. Awesome, thank you for that. So uh, one of our viewers said they believe you guys have a low dose senolytic for your core product. Have you considered a cycling protocol where you would do a higher dose senolytic but only have it used periodically instead of daily? That's a very good question. In fact, it's one of the questions that we asked when we were formulating Novos Core. One of our scientific advisors, we've got a great team of scientific advisors uh, from Harvard, MIT, and the Salk Institute. Uh, the one from the Salk Institute is Dr. Pamela Maher, who is a, a world expert on ingredients like quercetin and fisetin and so on. Uh, we chose ultimately fisetin because there were concerns with quercetin and possible um, effects that the quercetin can have on healthy cells and uh, epithelial tissue. And so we wanted to be a little bit more conservative with it. And Fisetin also uh, seemed to have, at least in early studies, uh, more pronounced effects than, than the quercetin did. So uh, to that specific question as to uh, doing a, a high intermittent dose uh, or doing a lower chronic dose, uh, we were considering the high intermittent dose. And ultimately, after speaking with uh, Dr. Maher, it was decided that the chronic dose would be better because number one, it would still have the senolytic properties to it. Uh, it would be more gradual. Uh, it wouldn't be like a sudden pop, if you will, uh, of the ingredients, but it would, it would still do the trick for the, the uh, senolytic properties. Um, and it also has positive neurological benefits, Fisetin. So we figured if we are giving that lower dose, we're reducing the risk that we are damaging healthy tissue um, we are still having 
positive effects from a longevity standpoint on senescent cells. And as I mentioned earlier, the study at Newcastle University is validating that, that we have um, an actual effect on senescent cells. Those, those are the main reasons why we decided to, to, uh, to do it as a chronic dose, a chronic low dose. Sorry, it was the neurological benefits was, was mm -hmm. the, the third reason. Understood. And uh, a couple more coming in. What is your process for evaluating new ingredients? So this goes back to what we were uh, discussing earlier in terms of having the filter through which we consider uh, the different ingredients. So they, they have to be considered, uh, in addition to what I mentioned, uh, safe, uh, derived from nature. So these are ingredients that are either in human biology or they're ingredients that we have um, consumed through our food or for uh, centuries, and it's been considered to be very safe. And um, so, uh, and then of course the scientific literature and research. So we're not going to hop on the, the bandwagon of, of like the newest, hottest um, ingredients simply because there's a couple of uh, studies that, that show that it might have a favorable effect. We'll be a little bit more conservative than that and make sure that it is definitively or nearly definitively having positive health effects uh, with a very, very low chance of any side effects or, or negative effects first do no harm, if you will. Uh, and then we will consider it for inclusion and we'll also consider it in relation to the other ingredients that would be taken simultaneously to see if there are synergis synergistic effects um, and also if there are any counteracting effects across ingredients. Uh, we need to be cognizant of that as well. Got it, thank you for that. And what's a good age to start taking your products? Is it possible that you might be too old or too young that, that's actually a very common question that we get. So there is no such thing as too young or too old. The analogy that I give is it's kind of like exercise or eating healthy. So you can't start eating healthy or exercising too early. It's always good for you. And the longer that you do it for, the longer that you're going to accumulate the benefits or the less damage that's going to uh, accumulate within your body. Um, so taking it at a younger age in say your early twenties, for example, is still uh, a great time to, to do it in addition to living that healthy pro longevity lifestyle. In terms of taking it when you're older, the question often comes up, is it too late to take it? And the answer to that is also no, because just like uh, the, the analogy with exercise um, pro providing benefits from an early age, we all know the research shows that even if you're in your 60s or 70s and then suddenly become act physically active, walking more or uh, playing a sport or, or dancing and so on uh, and eating healthier, that you can extend lifespan. Um, and so the, the same holds true. When you're older, you have more accumulated damage and you're more likely to see some of the short-term benefits of Novos in a more pronounced way when you're older because there has been more damage accumulated. Uh, the hallmarks of aging are really starting to accelerate. And so you're more likely to see a benefit from our ingredients. When you're younger, you're less likely to see an improvement in your facial skin, for example, your energy levels, because they're already very healthy, relatively speaking. Uh, but those benefits are going to accumulate over the years. And eventually when you are much older, you'll be in a better place than those who haven't been taking care of their health. Got it. Is Novos partnering with any aging diagnostic companies? That at this point is confidential. Uh, all I can say is that we are, uh, are in discussions and that there will be an announcement at some point in the future, but I can't give more information. Does your core powder come in unflavored varieties? Um, we were asked by someone who says uh, they think that has a citrus kind of flavor presently, and they're curious if there are any plans to expand. So Novos Core is orange flavored. It's all natural flavors. There's uh, sweeteners as well, but there are zero calorie sweeteners that have actually been found to have favorable health effects like stevia and um, xylitol, uh, sorry, erythritol, both have had uh, some studies showing some positive health effects. With that said, not everyone likes flavor. Uh, about two to 3% of our, our customers have, have said that they prefer unflavored so that they can mix it in a drink that they already drink or put it into a food product like a yogurt or something. 
so uh, we don't have any official statement on it, but I would just say to uh, hold out a little bit longer. Okay. And one more that just came in. When will there be an update to the composition? There would be an update to a composition if there was a convincing reason to make that update. So as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're doing multiple scientific studies right now, and we'd like to see how powerful the, the formulation is. And so far, we're getting fantastic results, results that each of the scientific labs working on these studies have literally said that they're, they're, they were amazed by the results. They did not expect to see the results that they were seeing. So we're not going to proactively break something that isn't broken, right? We're going to uh, see how, how far we can get with these studies. And then we will, uh, if we're considering the addition of an ingredient to the formulation or a tweak to the formulation, uh, we would want to validate it with some science to make sure we're not breaking anything first. So it would be a gradual process. We're not going to, uh, you know, just as I mentioned before, jump on to the latest hot ingredient to add it in simply so that we could market to people that we've got it. We're really based on the scientific evidence first and foremost. And, uh, and so for that reason, it, it, it would be more gradual. With that said, we will also be releasing additional products in the future. So that doesn't mean that if there is a very powerful ingredient that is scientifically validated, that you won't see it from Novos, uh, you probably will. It will just be in a very unique um, uh, unique carrier and synergistic formulation that we very carefully consider over time rather than rushing to get the next hot ingredient to market. And uh, just to close us out, and I want to thank you again for being here today. You know, what has you most excited about the longevity space and the future of this industry? So, so there's many different ways I can answer that question. Imagine there are. <laughs> I'll, I'll focus on the area that we find ourselves, which is the consumer space. Uh, I remember when I decided to start Novos, I, I actually spoke with uh, the founders of the Life Extension Advocacy Foundation. So uh, Keith and Oliver, and uh, we, we brainstormed the idea of, of Novos together. Uh, part of the reason why I started Novos was because I was attending events in the field and found everything was on the biotech side of things or pharma side of things. So much more uh, aggressive therapies, really trying to like extend maximal human lifespan or like reverse aging in, in short order. And there wasn't anything that was easy and accessible for me to take or my loved ones to take and my community at large in the short term. But when I spoke to scientists and asked them about natural ingredients, some of which are in Novos Core now, they were very optimistic about the potential of these ingredients. And that was the validation point or the aha moment where I realized there was a lot that wasn't being done. We were not accounting for the consumer, for the human being in the process of trying to do these, these uh, you know, rocket ship um, uh, scientific interventions. So what has me most excited is to see that there's more and more attention going to this space, that we are actually creating formulations that can have a positive effect on longevity at large uh, via these hallmarks of aging as our scientific research is showing. Uh, and then the thought of pe people being able to test and validate these interventions at home with at-home blood tests like epigenetic tests or other biomarkers. I think we're really going to have a transformation of consumers where their mindset, uh, at, as much as we've been moving towards preventative medicine overall, uh, I don't think preventative medicine is nearly as powerful as it is when viewed through the, the lenses of longevity medicine. And that is the ultimate form of preventative medicine. And now that we're getting more attention in the space and more tools to be able to uh, impact longevity, I think that there's a really promising potential for people's health spans and lifespans looking forward. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone who's joined us today. Uh, if you'd like to reach Chris, there are plenty of ways to get a hold of him through the Novos website, LinkedIn, and also through our swap card platform for this conference. So thank you all for the great questions. Thank you, Chris, for being here. And uh, everyone enjoy the rest of the conference.